gerunds and gerund phrases. Uh, gerunds are verbals, like participles. They are verbs that act like another part of speech. So the gerund is a verb that acts like a noun. So the gerund acts like a noun. The participle is a verb that acts like an adjective. That's how you distinguish between the two, how they are functioning in the sentence. Gerunds always end in ing, while only present participles end in ing. Past participles can end in different ways. Gerunds, doesn't matter, always have ing in there somewhere. So, ends in ing, verb ending in ing, acting like a noun in the sentence. So let's find our sentence patterns. Sentence one, stretching builds flexibility. Stretching is the subject, builds is the verb, builds what? Flexibility, that's your direct object. So, stretching ends in ing, it's also a verb, so that makes it our gerund. Functioning as the subject of the sentence. Then, we have our second sentence. Endurance exercises, subject, include, verb, include what? Bicycling and running. Two direct objects. Also, two verbs that end in ing. Bicycling and running, but they're not our verb, because include is the transitive verb. So they're not our verb, that means they're acting, and in this case, they're acting as nouns, ending in ing, they're gerunds. Next sentence, some people give walking their attention because it is less rigorous. Let's look at our sentence patterns. People, is the subject, give is the verb, give what? Give their attention, not walking, they don't give walking. But to whom do they give their attention? Walking. So in this case, it's an indirect object. And as you can tell, walking is a verb ending in ing, making it our gerund. Also functioning as a noun. Transitive verb. Don't forget that. Then our final sentence here. Another endurance exercise is swimming. So subject, linking verb is and so that means we have a predicate noun as a predicate noun it's a noun so swimming ending in ing verb ending in ing acting as a noun that's our gerund so there are some things that nouns nouns function in a certain way in the sentence so you've seen some of them nouns function as in the first one subjects second one we had some direct objects third one indirect objects Last sentence, we had predicate nouns. Um, now, we're missing some. They can also be objects of the preposition. We'll see that in a later sentence. Maybe in a positive, but none of our sentences today will focus on that. So let's move on to the next slide. Look at some gerund phrases. Oh, here's an object of the preposition. Right here. So find our sentence pattern. Exercise subject should be accompanied verb intransitive because there's no direct object and this is a prepositional phrase and I have eating here in italics you already know that's the gerund because it's eating is a verb ending in ing but in this case it's the object of the preposition just to get a little bit ahead um, gerund phrases just like Participle phrases, any verbal phrase, includes three things. Verbal, in our case the gerund, so the gerund, any modifiers, and any complements. So, proper, that describes eating, so that would be the whole gerund phrase, functioning as the object of the preposition. Second sentence, we have a positive, so it's for our sentence pattern. Even a regular routine, routine is a subject. Can make verb. Make what? The difference. Direct object. Between a healthy and unhealthy body. That's our 
prepositional phrase. So the only word ing, sleeping, is our positive that's renaming routine. In this case, functioning, our gerund here is functioning as in a positive. Let's look some more with gerund phrases. So we have gerund with a complement. First one, chasing is our gerund. I need an ing. Chasing what? Ball. Direct object. So that's our subject. So our subject is this whole phrase over here. That's our phrase, chasing a ball, subject. And we have our linking verb. One is a predicate now. Then we have one of my dog's favorite activities. Prepositional phrase. So gerund with adverbial phrase. This one, just a, it's just a prepositional phrase acting as an adverb. So let's find our sentence pattern. Subject, can, is a verb, can, can catch. Ooh, catch is a also a verb. You can catch what? The ball, the direct object. So this is a transitive verb with the helping verb over there. Can you catch the ball? How can you jump, catch the ball? By jumping into the air. So this is our prepositional phrase, but the gerund, jumping, is acting like object of the preposition, but it's got this other prepositional phrase inside of it, describing it into the air. So jumping into the air, that's the object of the preposition. So this whole thing is the object of the preposition. And way over to the end. I don't know how to do that, but that's right. The whole thing's the object of the preposition. Last one, with some adjectives. So, his catching the ball is our gerund phrase. Here's our gerund. The ball is a complement, direct object, and his is an adjective describing catching. So this whole phrase right here, this is our subject. Is catching the ball. Is rewarded, it's our verb, with a biscuit. Prepositional phrase. Okay, gerund phrases. Last slide. There are some other weird gerunds, perfect gerunds. They're not that different. They still act like nouns. They still have ing at the end. But happens to be having that has the ing. So as you can see with the italicized marks, having told is the gerund here. Having told the secret, so that's the direct object of this phrase. Here we have our object of the preposition. She is sorry. There's our sentence pattern. Having told is just the gerund. So it's a perfect gerund, having in front. So if you want to look for perfect gerunds, look for having. Whereas the second one, just a regular present gerund. Telling the secret is the subject. Ruins is the verb. Ruins what? Direct object. Transitive, additional phrase. Telling the secret. Telling the gerund. The secret is the complement. Telling the secret is our gerund phrase. Well, if you have any questions about gerunds, gerund phrases, let me know. Thanks.